On October 24, 2017, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. This could derail a lot of people, but me, I let art save my life. small town of about a thousand people. Um, there wasn't a whole lot to do except adventure in the woods, which I did a lot of. My brother used to draw all kinds of stuff. He'd draw imaginary characters, um, real stuff, any of that. And I remember, you know, being a little kid and stealing his drawings and stuff. And I'd, I'd tape them to a window um, with a blank piece of paper over top of it and I would trace them. And then I knew, you know, super young that I wanted to get out of Missouri, I didn't want to be there forever, that my dreams were bigger than the place that I'm from. So I came to uh, Northern Kentucky, went to NKU, graduated there, decided that wasn't what I wanted to do either. Nothing really fed my soul, I guess. There was nothing that made me want to stay in all of the careers that I'd chosen before I decided to become a tattoo artist. Um, I got into it, you know, um, kind of off chance. I just I came into the tattoo shop with a drawing that I had drawn um, of a tattoo I wanted on my forearm. And the guy there, you know, got me in the next day and he, as he was tattooing me, I was just BSing with him. I was just talking about where I'm from and what I love and what I do and stuff like that. And he randomly asked me if I'd ever thought about being a tattoo artist, which at the time was kind of comical because I hadn't even thought about it. Um, I came back a year later and we were trying to fill my sleeve and we were tossing ideas around and we ended up going with the idea that I had. And he asked me again, he's like, you know, you sure you don't want to be a tattoo artist? And I called him back probably two months later and I was like, you know what, let's check this out. My two mentors at the shop always told me that I was trying to run before I walk, but that was kind of always been my mentality is like how much life can I put into um, the time that I have. You know, even before I was diagnosed, it was always like, okay, let's run. Like, I don't want to walk anywhere. It was, it was more of like a, I'm willing to do this. I'm willing to put in whatever I have to do to do this. Um, so I'll put myself through pain to prove that I want this. About four or five months into my apprenticeship when I got diagnosed and um, I wouldn't call it a death sentence because it's not, but you know, at a certain age, like my, you know, my limbs will stop doing what they're supposed to do. And so from there it just switched. It was like, all right, cool. So let me get, you know, as good as I can, as quickly as I can, you know, to make as much money, to meet as much people, to travel the world and be everything I want to be as quickly as I, as I possibly can. I would like to start an apparel company. I would like to brand my name and who I am individually as an artist instead of just being an artist within a shop. Even in my childhood, you know, even if it wasn't about art, you have two options. You can go two different ways. You can use something like this to say, okay, cool, this is what I was diagnosed with. This is what's gonna happen. Let me sit here and, you know, let me lay down and just let it be what it is. And look back 50 years from now and be like, wow, I just wasted 50 years of my life moping around about it. Or you can get up and you can do something about it. You can go be you know, the most that you want to be no matter what. Um, life's going to deal you the cards that it's going to deal you, but at the end of the day, like you got to play them the way you can play them best. And I will always pick the road forward, no matter what, no matter what comes you know, my way, whatever's thrown my way, I'll always pick the road forward. So I just hope that people follow me and believe in me no matter what comes. And uh, that's it, man. I only got so much life, so let's see how much I can cram in it.